All right, so um, Muhammad ends up, um, you know, as I was stating, he, uh, to reiterate, um, the story goes is, is he um, has an older merchant wife named Khadija. Um, he gets his revelations when he's married to her. She becomes one of the first believers. He gets protections from his, Abu, uh, his uncle Abu Talib. They, um, he has this small community. They get persecuted. Um, uh, they flee. He ends up uh, developing politically uh, um, and, and just does well him and his community in Yathrib, uh, uh end up becoming Medina. Um, the spillover of, of uh, his actions um, creates several conflicts between Mecca and um, his position in uh, Medina. And ultimately, in the middle of all of the, um, the ebb and flow of victories and losses, he ends up coming out on top. And um, in fact, really creates um, an Ummah, uh, that the Arab tribes are actually united under this banner of Islam now. And um, as I was showing, it was going to be rapidly expanding. Um, the Quran at this point is not written down. These revelations are recited and told to his followers in certain contexts, which those contexts will be written down later, not necessarily in the Quran, though, but will be uh, utilized for understanding what the Quran means by um, many of its followers. And ultimately, he dies as a human, and it's a shock to, this, to, to um, the group, but... Muhammad never claims to be anything but a human. He is, um, uh, one source calls him a mercy that God gave to the world. He is the um, perfect emulator of uh, what God wanted, which is why he is seen as an exemplar. Why you never, you know, like as I mentioned, religious Muslims always say, um, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. But he is a mere human. And so he dies. And what does the community that follows him going to do? This is a crisis that anytime there's a, a strong leadership with one charismatic leader and then they, they die. So what happens? Okay. So <clears throat> this is called the era of rightly guided ones. Um, that's the time right after his death. I'm not going to go over... Um, all of them in great detail. What I want you to understand is that this is kind of where the birthplace of the Shiite Sunni split is going to take place. And it's a history that is going to become complicated um, for, or, or, and, and very important for those who care about the direct, like how the direction of this community that has God's revelation is going to go about now. Okay, um, because remember, he's the seal of the prophets. There's no more prophets. There's the revelations that everybody has memorized um, that um, is following him. And so where do you go from here? So Abu Bakr, um, he ends up ruling for just two years. Okay, he's the first Khalifa or the Caliph. Now, remember, this is the this is the era. So just to let you know, fundamentalist militants and not just militants, some there's branches of Islam, that, uh, especially now, that are kind of like Protestant Christians that really just want to take things back to the original simplest of times and to remove all of the historical baggage that comes with things later, okay? <clears throat> so um, the ISIS group, ISIL, whatever Islamic uh, state that uh, you use all over the news, there's this man who's claiming to be the caliph. And I've mentioned this in many of my lectures, and I'll mention again, that that doesn't mean that every Muslim has to listen, listen to him. Uh, there are some people who are are uh, um, maybe going to believe in him, but you know this is a title that was even contested then, and this is what we're going to see. Okay, so first of all, there were many people who converted to Islam clearly out of opportunism, and when Muhammad dies, they thought, well, great, I can just not stop doing this, um, you know, being a Muslim. And this creates some problems. Um, so there, there's all this kind of uh, um, struggle of, of uh, keeping the community together. More fights. Uh, Abu Bakr unites all the Arabs, uh, uh, tribes of Arabia. Um, his daughter, Aisha, is given in marriage uh, uh, to Muhammad when she was very young. Um, okay. 
and she becomes his favorite wife. Now, that's also a very controversial point that I want to address, and I'm not I'm not going to talk about it much. I just want to say there's some. Um, a lot of controversy about the age in which she was married to Muhammad um, at nine, and a question about when this marriage was consummated. For critics of Islam, this is clearly, we know where this is going, okay? Um, there's, again, a debate whether that was, like, when the actual consummation took place. What I do know is that what's interesting is that uh, Aisha in the stories not only is recorded as being the favorite uh, wife of uh, Muhammad but she is actually a very strong woman and one of the most independent and outspoken women in the story of, of these times and uh, later hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate that with you so I'm just going to move on from there and just kind of point that out um, Omar sometimes spelled Omar or Omar he rules next from 632 to 644. He invades Iraq, Syria, Palestine, uh, meaning uh, Jerusalem, Al Quds, uh, uh, um, and Egypt. <coughs> Excuse me. He marries Ali's daughter, and in 644, a Persian prisoner of war assassinates him. Okay. And move on. <clears throat> and under Uthman, okay, who rules from 644 to 656, he. Uh, has somewhat more of a controversial uh, uh, time. His legitimacy is he has a much more rocky uh, uh, caliphship, if you want to call it that. Um, he comes from the Umayyad clan, um, but he sets the Quran to writing and makes an, an official version. Okay, and so we see that the Quran comes relatively quickly set in writing from the times of of Muhammad to um, uh, hit from his death into his community. So you, you know with the Christian text, you saw how much more complicated and long period of time it took to streamline what would we call uh, uh, the Christian New Testament. Um, and for the Quran, it is almost immediate. Um, there were other versions, according to the story, that uh, what, what he basically did is he said, everybody come, let's all collaborate, and we all agree that this is this, this, okay, somebody's got some weird... Thing they're, they're off over here because remember we all memorize this orally or we wrote this down in a note somewhere and so he he burns he, he wants to eradicate any variants that were seen as a corruption and then create a unified uh, uh, Quran um, he married two of Muhammad's daughters and he's also uh, um, murdered uh, um, uh, a malcontent Muslim soldier murders him and claims that um, Ali is the next caliph now we're kind of building into this whole Shiite Sunni uh, tension. Okay. Ali, very important for um, understanding a lot of the tensions that's going even on in Iraq right now. Okay. So if you can follow this, I, you will be able to really understand some of the sectarianism that's really plaguing the Islamic community right now. Okay. All right. So Ali rules from 656 to 661. Who was he? Um, Ali was the cousin and son-in-law of Muhammad. That's right. He was the cousin and son-in-law. Okay. He was married uh, 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 to uh, Muhammad's daughter Fatima. Okay. Um, and he becomes caliph, but already the Islamic community is getting split. Okay. And you really have uh, uh, one of the first civil wars happening right there. In 656... Aisha, remember her, okay, she's Muhammad's widowed uh, wife, his favorite, and the girl that was married to him very young. Now, like I was saying, you know, she leads an, you know, here's this girl, she, she's a, a child bride to Muhammad, no matter what, what time she consummates him, that's true. But, um, she leads an army against Ali on a large camel, <coughs> excuse me. Because Ali will not avenge the death of Uthman, um, and this is a battle called Battle of the Camel. Um, we can only imagine what would have happened if she went, uh, would, would have won, um, but uh, uh, her army is defeated, and due to her status, um, she is given amnesty by Ali, okay? But her whole personality, is like the way she's depicted, is very interesting, because she's constantly... Um, 
showing a very assertive um, boldness, okay? She is not a passive girl by any means, okay? Um, uh, I should say woman. Um, but ultimately, she's going to fail, and I'm going to stop right here, and I'll return back to the next section.